Time to talk League of Ireland football once again. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we spoke. Keith Kine, you're welcome back to the airwaves of Highland Radio. Thanks very much, Archie. Keith, good to see you again. Uh, we're going to talk about Finn Harps and, and Derry City in a moment, but maybe draw it out. First of all, uh, a loss last week at the hands of Sligo. Uh, two defeats in your last three games in the league. The other one was to, to Finn Harps, a game that you weren't involved in. But in between that, uh, you defeated Shells by three goals to one. Shells currently sitting just two points off you guys, above you in the standings. Is that is that the target for the rest of the campaign to try and overhaul them, Keith? And as I seen, you know, that's, I suppose, you know, you're always trying to catch the team in front of you. Uh, we see Shells as being a realistic target. Uh, unfortunately, last week, we didn't really take our opportunity. You know, it would have been a chance to go above them in the league. Um, we're disappointed with the performance. You know, we thought we had enough chances to win the game. Um, you know, speaking to the manager afterwards, the, the Sligo manager, and he thought we should have won the game, you know, so that tells you something in itself. Um, a disappointing performance from us. I don't think we did enough, um, I suppose, defensively. So, you know, in my department, that's kind of, where I felt we were we were quite poor, uh, conceding the manner the goals in the manner that, that we did it was disappointing. But uh, you know this week again, look, we we have a home game against against Pats. Pats, I suppose, at the end form uh, team in the league, maybe not a great time to get them. But uh, look, we have to look at that game as a possibility of uh, getting three points and again trying to try to move past Shelburne. Yeah. Listen, your season could be coming to a very exciting end later in, the, in October, Keith, because the next time you meet Shells is at the end of the month, one of the closing ties. That that could be the decisive the decisive game as to, to who finishes seventh in the standings. Will it be Drogheda or will it be Shells? Yeah, the, you know, all those games kind of sort of intermingle with, with the likes of Shells, Harps and UCD are kind of all near the end of the season that we, we play each other in that order for whatever, for whatever reason that it's fallen. Uh, that, that that's going to be a huge game um, for I, th- I think for both our seasons. Um, like it's it's definitely going to be an opportunity for us to hopefully pull away from 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 Harps where 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 they are at the minute, um, and then obviously to try and try and maybe be ahead of Shells by that stage. They know that that has to be our target. You know they'll be looking over their shoulder. Yes, they've got I think they've got two games in hand on us, but um, not that they will be taking anything for granted either. They're going to be looking. Obviously, Sligo this weekend for, for an opportunity for them uh, to, to, to get three points as well. They got a home game against Sligo. Yeah, with well, eight games to go, Keith, is your hardly still concerned about what's happening below you? Are you at Drogheda? I think until I think it's silly, to, until it's mathematically impossible. To, to, you know, you, you have to use that as a motivational thing. You know, uh, as anything, look, if we're if we're going out every week and putting in performances, hopefully, then we're picking up points. Um, look, you're always going to keep an eye, as I say, if it's mathematically possible, you're always going to keep an eye on, on what's happening below you. But, you know, our main focus is, is, I suppose, pushing ahead and trying to get past Shelburne. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Harps then. Uh, they've got a tie against Shamrock Rovers on Sunday. Uh, without doubt, the top team in the country at the moment, their, their league position tells you that. They've got European competition as well. Uh, Harps in the past, as you know, Keith, have put it up to Shamrock Rovers at times. How big a task is it to go to Tala once again and, and try and put it up to them at this stage of the season? I think there's something different about Tala. I think every time that you go there, you know, you've got, you know, you've got the nice stadium, you've got the great pitch. It's a great place to play football because, you know, as I say the size of the pitch, the quality of the surface. Um, obviously, we know Shamrock Overs are playing tonight against your garden and the, and the, and the conference league. So they're going to obviously be putting everything into that. Then you know they they'll have to think about what's happened in the league during the week with Dundalk. You know, getting those extra points off the, uh, from Sligo playing an eligible player uh, two weeks ago. So they're going to have to maybe put you know think yes, obviously be thinking tonight that it's a massive task. Then you know Harps coming up to them on on uh, on Sunday fighting for their lives. I suppose what they are, and they'll be you know they'll have that you know. What four or five days extra rest from the last time they played? Haven't played la- haven't played Pats last Friday night, and being unlucky not to come away with something out of that game because yes, Pats started very well, went into a two goal lead, but once Hart scored, you know they very much put it up to put it up to Pats. This game, obviously, you know, you I see as you, as you mentioned, Ashin, you're you're playing Shamrock Rovers, you're, you're playing the best team in the country, you're playing a team that has you know that can put out two teams, you know, two different teams almost every week. But obviously, you know, tonight is going to be their main 
they're 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 main objective. They want to you know try and lay down a marker and, and the conference league. They want to be want to try and get off to a good start. You know, obviously winning your home games. They're going to have ambitions in this competition too. They're not just going to be there to make the numbers. You know, they'll you know maybe think themselves unlucky not to be in the and the and the Europa League. Uh, but yeah, the harps going up there. As you say, everyone raises their game when they go there. You know, you you're playing against the champions. You know, it's the, it's, the, it's the pinnacle of our league. So there's no reason why Harps can't go there, be organised, be be tough to break down, and you know maybe next something. I think they'll be that's the way that that, that that they set up against Pats. You know they had them on the counter attack; they were dangerous. So I think the I think the the approach will be very similar once they go to Tal on Sunday. Yeah, Ryan Rennie and uh, Ryan Connolly, both uh, coming back tonight for or back this weekend rather for for Harps. Uh, Ollie Horgan will be back on the line as well. And I suppose from Ollie's point of view, it's important now for as we head to the close of the season that that he has as many players available as possible if they're going to survive in this top flight. Yeah, disappointed. I suppose he'll be disappointed, and Ryan will be disappointed about picking up those red cars. Look, it's it's, it's not stuff that we want to see. Uh, from management or from players, you know, picking up, you know, silly, silly bookings and silly reds. It's almost become accustomed over the years. And, you know, I know the, the Harps faithful are, you know, seem a bit aggrieved that, you know, Ollie gets booked and his antics maybe on the line, you know, that he would maybe pay the price more than other managers would. And, you know, the officials come down hard on Harps players. Um, maybe there's something in that, who might I say, but uh, look. Did you, did you feel it. that when you were playing with Harps, Keith? Um, well, I'll tell you now, right? I haven't been suspended this year yet, right? right. And so I, I picked up three yellow cards, um, uh, in the first half of the season, which were cancelled out into the second, okay? Yeah. So I, sh- I shouldn't amass, um, you know, a suspension through yellow cards, and I haven't received any red cards. So, and I was always good for a couple of suspensions when I was at Harps. Um, yeah. You know, I remember having conversations with Ollie over the years, and he says, you know, well, you're going to miss one or two with, <laughs> with suspensions. And I was like, Ollie, so are you. So, uh, <laughs> so, so we always were able to have that conversation. So, um, yeah, look. look who, who well, actually, saying, are you know? still going on as hard in the tackle now as what you were when you were at Harps? Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the first. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm not able. Maybe I'm not able to make those tackles that I was used to. But uh, no, look. Who, who am I to say with that? There, look. That's you know, obviously referees. You know, have their own wee committees, and you know, like they, I'm sure they talk amongst themselves, just like players do, just like managers do. So, look, uh, I think that one. I'll, I'll I'll leave that one for another day until maybe finish. <laughs> until yeah. finish playing football to to cast any aspersions on. Has anybody done anything against the Harps players or or management? Yeah, I see. Ollie said in the in the Donegal news this week, uh, there's never been a time where you could relax and think, yeah, we're going to be all right this year. Was that the case too when you were at Harps, Keith? You could never really relax when you were playing in Premier Division football. No, never. You couldn't. You know, every game was massive. Every game was uh, an opportunity to pick up maximum points or or a point or whatever the case may be. You couldn't get too down after a, after a defeat because. You know, you you weren't, you weren't going to be challenging challenging for leagues. You know, if you got to the next round of a cup, that would have been a massive bonus. But uh, yeah, and that's the reason why come on these sort of had to push the reset button and go again and try and keep spirits high because uh, if Harps are to survive this year, and you know they, they definitely have a good chance of doing that. You know, the the whole camaraderie, the whole team, the whole the whole team spirit has to be high, and it's about you know that will that will definitely be a massive factor if they're to survive this year. Yeah. Well, let's, let's stay at the bottom of the table. UCD at the, the UCD Bowl hosting Dundalk on Friday night. As you mentioned, Dundalk getting the points this week. That'll be a big boost to the to the Lily Whites and the, they'll be going in with a, an extra spring to their step then to play the students. It's, that's a game that you would expect them to win on the road. Yeah, I suppose looking back at that game from, you know, the, the last few weeks where they haven't really deserved much Dundalk the way that they've, you know, that they've, you know, had had their approach to games and the way that they've actually put on a shift on that. So, yeah, that, obviously that gives you a boost. That's a, you know three bonus points that you that you think you're not going to have. If they're thinking about challenging for the league, then they have to go there uh, to UCD and they have to just be taking three points and you know just do a professional job and get that done. UCD actually have impressed me over the last couple of weeks and over the course of the season, where you know uh, the UCD team in the past, I suppose you know students, young lads. You know, you, you you suspect them to be a bit of a soft touch. Um, you know, play good football, play a really nice brand of football. You know, and you know are generally a sort of a a feeder a feeder team or a feeder club for 
for other other you know I, can, I think I remember one season where Shamrock Rovers took three or four players from the UCD team mid season that have obviously finished their degrees. And that actually was key to Harp's survival that year because UCD just fell apart after that. I think they were ahead of us in the league. I think they were ahead of us by maybe maybe 10 points or something like that, maybe eight, eight points. And then we were able to make that up because, you know, the, their best players were gone. So that obviously being the case this year, you see what UCD have. You know, they definitely put up to teams, you know, physically, their style of play. I said they are really impressive. So Dundalk will have to be on their game come, uh, come Friday night if they're looking to get three points at UCD both. Yeah. Derry City will be annoyed that the points were awarded to, to Dundalk and now the fact that the Lily Whites have gone back into second with that Derry yes they do have a have a game in hand Bohemians is the opposition a tough opposition at that as well Keith but uh, Derry are having home advantage and if they can get the, the men firing up top it's it's a game that they're well capable of taking the three points on and keeping pace with, with Dundalk there yeah, I think after last weekend, I think Derry kind of were thinking it was maybe a two horse race, just themselves and uh, and uh, Shamrock Rovers. Mm. Uh, you know, a, good, a convincing win, I suppose, at home, albeit you know the team that's bottom of the league. Um, Derry, I suppose, faltering maybe in weeks past there, where they maybe were thinking they would have been picking up three points, and you know, I think that you know that the last minute win away to Shells was a you know was give them a big you know a big kick really and sort of get put them back into that position again where they could go on and win the league and then you know you see a bit of mind games maybe last week where you know Higgins is saying that you know it's it's Shamrock Rovers league to lose now you know that famous line is said now and again so kind of trying to put all the pressure back on Rovers and look I say that they put themselves in a great position they've invested heavily again in the window and those you know those players Graham coming in and Diallo, Diallo coming in and scoring and in, in, in the last few games and you know giving them that, that extra bounce that they want Bowes last week you know kind of maybe not really nobody would have expected them to win that game yes a big derby the big Dublin derby but, you know they come out on the right side of it losing their manager Keith Long that week and you know, maybe, maybe getting that bounce from uh, you know from a new manager coming in so they'll be hoping that that's still alive you know obviously going to Brandy well it's a really really tough place to go and and try and get anything so yeah with Derry pushing to try and win the league now and you know with Bowes and we'll try to revive their season and try and get something going with the last couple of weeks it'll, I think it'll be a tough game but you know you expect I think Derry with what they have and with what, what they've got and should win that game yeah the ideal scenario on Friday evening would be Drogheda taking points of St. Pat's at home and Sligo Rovers beating Shells in Dublin at Tulka Park? That'd be great. That'd be great if you could if you could sort that for me, Ashley. That would be 100%. I would take it. Uh, difficult. Um, you know, yeah, all roads lead to Dublin this weekend. Gareth Brooks is there. You'll probably be going to that, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure, I think for Sligo, after them losing the three points, being, you know, we'll be taken off them the week before after putting in a good performance against Dundalk, you know, that, that'll be playing on their minds there, sort of Kind of in that limbo, along with uh, along with Bowes, where you know they're not. I would be surprised if they're really going to skip into the top four. You know they're not really going to be dragged into what's happening below. You know they've had it. They've had the good season where you know they've been involved in Europe and got through uh, you know a few rounds in that. So um, you know for them now it'll be sort of a case of finishing out the season. Hopefully they'll be able to do us a favour um, by going and beating Shells. Um, Shells, you know. As, Obviously, uh, we had the other big one against Bonnegie a few weeks ago, uh, and the cup did a professional job there. But you know, uh, Duff seems to be—you know—he seems to be thinking that the whole league's against him, and no one likes him. He's trying to create a bit of a siege mentality with him and his players. So that'll be—you know—that that's what, what what they'll be putting up to Sligo. Um, but hopefully, Sligo can maybe go and do a job there. Yeah. You going to Gareth Brooks? Are you? No, nah, it's not for me. It's not my kind of music, I'm afraid, Ashley. Uh, no, but look here, I'll, I'll, I'll credit to you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge you. Uh, well, I'm not going to Gareth Brooks either, Keith. So there you go. So there you go. Uh, finally, you've been very impressed with Manchester United over the last couple of weeks. We can end this now, Ashley, if you want. We don't need to carry on. Okay, here, I'm not a, I'm not a, a Premier League expert. I'm not even a League of Ireland expert, but I'm, not, I'm definitely not a Premier League expert or a Man United expert. It's great. It's great to see you smiling. It's great to see you happy. Uh, you've been you've been a sore man there for two or three years. So <laughs> after 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 three or four games of the season, it's great to see you smile on your face. Well, we'll leave it at that, Keith. It's always good That's to talk to you. Well. Thanks for joining us, and the best of luck at the weekend. Cheers, Ashley. Good man. Thank you.